Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over some uh, tips for program two. So the first thing I want to do is I want to download the instruction video and download the template code and download the input file. So let's go over the instructions first. Ugh. I don't want to. Okay, so here are the instructions. Let's uh, open it with uh, something else. So my downloads. So the program two, let's open this with. All right, so let's go over the instructions for program two. Uh, we can zoom in a little bit. All right, so we're going to continue on with program one. So you should have completed program one before doing program two. The coin data is going to be the same. We're going to still do nickels in the range, dimes, and quarters. So it's going to be the same kind of coin data. So you can use your information from program one for program two. We're going to format to two decimal places. That's also from program one. The difference now for this assignment, we're going to do two things. One, we're going to use functions. So we're going to use four functions. Uh, we're going to use a function to read data from the file. And then we're going to do a function to process the nickels, a function to process the dimes, and a function to process the quarters. The other thing is the first function and that information is we are going to read data from the file. I know that we haven't started file processing and we're going to go in a lot more detail later, but I'm giving you the code and everything for it. And so um, I want to uh, demonstrate it for you here in this video and I also have added how to do it in the template code. The reason I'm adding file input is because it is really, really tedious to you know, enter the nickel and the year, enter the dime and the year. So I have given you guys a, um, a sample input file. This is the coin data input file that I have um, provided for you. So this has a nickel from 1943, 50 cent piece, which it should come up and say it's not valid, a quarter, etc. Now you can go ahead and create your own coin data. You can modify this, you could, but it should still be called coin data with a capital C and a capital D dot txt file. Another thing is if you do modify it, if you add more in, you know, more coins and then you hit enter like this and you save it into your project directory, which I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that in a second, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to read this line twice. So what you need to do is you need to backspace here, make sure that your cursor, because we're using the end of file, uh, option to find, you know, to read the data until the end of the file. So if you hit enter right here, for some reason, it, it reads this line twice, at least in Visual Studio, it does that. So make sure if you're going to save it, that you backspace to here, and then you save it. The other thing is if you, I do hope that the file that I put on there the coin data file, that's the one that I used in my project. So that one should be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that file into my project folder. So I'm gonna open up, uh, this is, so I've already gone in Visual Studio and I've already created a, um, a project. So where's my solution explorer right here. So I've already created a project uh, called, oh, I spelled it wrong, program two. Okay, it should be program two. Uh, just in case you didn't know, you can rename your source code file right here. So you can rename it and I can also rename my uh, my project folder. I'm not gonna have you guys watch me do that, but Anyway, Ugh. all right, so I have created a project in Visual Studio. And so what I'm going to do is open up the folder. This is the folder where my project is. This is the source code for my project. If I open this up, it's the same source code. I haven't edited it yet. 
and I'm going to go ahead and drag the coin data file into the same directory as my source code. So in order to um, in order to use an input file, you just need to create a project and then drag the input file into the same directory as your source code. If I decide that I want to use an online compiler, I can use an online C++ compiler. We'll just say I'll use this one. You have the option here to create a new file. You can name that coindata.txt. So my project, I have my main function here, which uh, I can work in to test my code. And then I also have my input file and I can go ahead and uh, copy and paste the data from this file into this file. So it, whatever way you wanna do it, this is just an option to do it in the online compiler. The online compiler will have your main, your, and you can just go up here, add a new file, and you can add the input file. So um, whatever tool you're using, you're gonna have to figure out how to add this input file to it. I have given you two options here. As far as this online compiler goes, all you need is a browser. So there should be no reason uh, that you uh, can't, you know, you, any, everyone uh, has the internet and a browser. So you can certainly test your code and work on it here in an online compiler. I prefer to use Visual Studio. I like the look of it. So I'm going to do that. My project is located here in my computer. This is the folder for my program two video. My program two video source code is in that folder. So I just put the input file in the same folder as my source code. The other file that I've downloaded is the uh, template code. So I'm gonna go ahead, I can put the template code in the online compiler. So we can, we, we'll go through it in Visual Studio, but I will show you that I have already added connecting to the input file. And so if it does not connect to the input file, then it will exit. It'll say I didn't file open the file directly correctly. If it does connect to the input file, it's going to read all the data in the file. Obviously, we need to add more information here, but this should be enough for you to see if it's actually connected to the file or not. So if you run it like this, a, you enter your name. Okay, so it says it doesn't match any criteria because we haven't actually processed any of the data, but it did not say that it was unable to open the file. So if I go ahead and rename this, which means that I, this does not have the same file name as the input file, it should say it did not open correctly. So let's try that. See, now it says the input file did not open correctly, and that's because the input file name must match exactly the input file name that you have in your code. All right, so I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio, but I do, did want to demonstrate that you can do this whole program in an online compiler, and it shouldn't be too difficult to add the input file to your project. So now I'm in uh, Visual Studio. I'm going to paste in the template code that I gave you, and I'm gonna spend a little time going through this template code. If you do have any questions on the specifications of the assignment, please feel free to ask. I'm assuming that you've already worked on program one before starting on program two. So this program is going to include, uh, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make the font a little bigger. All right, so this program is going to include uh, three libraries. So this is for the uh, standard IO. This is for the string class. We're just, for the string class, we're just inter interacting with uh, so, um, the first name, just to practice. And this is Fstream. You need to include this for file processing. 
All right, so I've put the function prototypes up here at the top. You need to set up your code so that it has function prototypes at the top. Your main function is uh, here, and then you put your function definitions down at the bottom. So let's go through the code. The first function I've given to you is the input function. This function has three parameters. These three parameters are called pass by reference parameters. So another reason I wanna do this, because if you've struggled through pointers in C, when you get to C++, we have what's called pass by reference parameters. I am aware that we have not covered this in detail yet. However, um, like I said before, I want to introduce some things to you and I have given you all the code for this one function. So what's going to happen with this function is it's going to, before the function is called, it's going to declare an integer for the dollar value, declare an integer for the year. So the dollar value means 5, 10, 25, 50. It's nickels or 5. It's an integer. It's also going to have a variable for the year. So in order to use pass by reference function, parameters, you need to have variables. You can, you have to pass, it's a reference, so you're passing the address. The nice thing is, is that if you set it up like this in C++ to be reference parameters, you don't have to put address of and value at. So C++ has made that feature more streamlined. So the name of the function is input. It has three parameters by reference. Before I call the function, if you look down here, before I call this input function, I have already declared the dollar value and the year. So I already have these two variables, so I'm actually passing their address to the function. In addition, I've already declared the in stream for the, uh, so this is an IF stream, that means an input file stream, which we will go in more detail, but I've declared it. I've declared the input file stream. I've declared the dollar and the year. And so when I call this function, which is right here, when I call this function, it's going to pass the, the file stream for the input file, the dollar value variable, and the year variable. So what's going to happen is we're gonna connect to the file. If we connect to the file, if we are unable to connect to the file, it's just going to say, oh, we were unable to connect to the file, so we're going to exit and the program is going to end. If that doesn't happen, we're going to read data from the file and process the data one by one. So this, me this is the, the loop to say, okay, keep reading data from the file until you get to the last piece of data or uh, end of file. That's what EOF stands for, end of file. So we're going to read in, this, this input right here is going to read the first item from the file, and then you're going to process it. So you're going to have to add, if the dollar value is a 5, else if, oops, else if the dollar value is 10, You're going to have to add these, which, um, and you're also going to have to add processing for 25. So we're not going to add any other dollar values. We're just going to deal with nickels, dimes, and quarters. So this part you're going to have to add to the program. You're also going to have to add all the information on how to process the nickel, how to process the dime, and how to process the quarter. So the logic of how this works is, we'll go through here again. I've declared my dollar value and my year. I've declared my in stream. I connect to the file. If I'm unable to connect to the file, I'm going to print a message onto the screen and the program's going to end. If I am able to connect to the file, I'm going to read data from the file one item at a time. This function call right here is going to call the function it's connected to the file. It's going to get the first dollar value, the first year, and then process it. Then it's going to come back here. This is the loop. So um, it's going to come back here. 
After it processes the first item in the file, it's going to check, have I reached the end of the file? If I have not reached the end of the file, I will get the next um, uh, data, process it. Have I reached the end of the file? I will get the next data and process it. So this function is a programmer defined function that I've written and I've given to you. So you go down here to the function definitions and this is the file. The file is just called input. It takes the file stream that's connected. It takes the dollar value by reference and it takes the year by reference. And then it just reads in from the file the first dollar value and the first year. So they have to be in that order, the dollar value followed by the year. So the way that you can test to see if it's working is very simple. You just add a C out right here that says current dollar value. current year. So you don't have to keep this, but this is just so that you can uh, check to make sure that it is working as expected. So you print it onto the screen and then this is going to give you all of the uh, information each time that it reads the data from the file. And this is just printing, it doesn't match uh, it doesn't match every time that it's not a five, because that's the only if I have here, it's gonna print that onto the screen. But you could say, if it's a five, you could add, you know, uh, C out here. You should always add C out messages to yourself to follow what's going on. So let's just build this and test it and make sure it's reading all of the information from the file. Actually, I wanna get rid of this right now because I want to make sure that it that it's matching all of the directions all of the information in the file all right we're getting our first name so it it reads the the dollar value 5 1943 so you can bring up your coin data file which you're welcome to uh modify and change, but you can see it's reading all of the correct data from the file. So it's able to connect to the file, read the data one by one, each item, each uh, dollar value and year directly from the file. So we know that our file is now working. So now all we have to do is process our information. Now I wanna make sure that you understand the instructions because um, that, that one pass by reference parameter is already done for you. There isn't any reason for you to change this. It's already set up for you, but you have two different options on how you would like to do your processing functions. So you can process to practice pass by reference. You can process the nickel by passing the nickel total to your, uh, to your function. And then this is passed by value. So the years passed by value, the current silver price is passed by value, which of course you're gonna have to add that here. You have to ask and get the silver price. But for each of these functions, you have, you have a choice. You don't have to do both. You can either get the nickel total by an input output parameter or a reference parameter, and you can get that value using a reference parameter for practice. Or if you prefer, you can pass the year, the silver price, and then process nickel will process it and it will return the total back as a return type. So I, I'm leaving this up to you to pick which way you want to do it. And um, so I will, uh, in the next video, I will demonstrate both options using the process nickel function.